Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Minister, for appearing today. Uh, I'd like to pick up where my, my colleague left off and uh, with the issue of uh, refunds for um, passengers who purchased tickets they were not able to use. And maybe I'll start by just asking you very bluntly whether you are considering forcing the airlines to provide full refunds to passengers who are not able to use their tickets. Well, thank you for your question, Mr. Backrack. We are following the situation. Uh, as I have said to the previous speaker, uh, previous uh, MP, uh, I'm encouraging the airlines to provide the best possible compensation to their passengers uh, when circumstances permit. Some of these airlines are not in a position to do this at this time. And it's important for consumers also to be aware of, of what the tariffs actually say. Those are the contracts of their ticket purchase. Uh, it's not uh, as clear cut as many people may think. In the best of all worlds, we'd like to make sure that all passengers are happy. But as you know, the airlines have been hammered by this, uh, uh, by this pandemic. And uh, some of them are not operating at all. And some of them are operating at below 10% and yet are still facing uh, serious fixed costs. I, I would offer that Canadian families, many are, are hurting financially as well, and the cost of an airline ticket can be uh, quite steep. Other authorities around the world have taken different approaches. Uh, April 3rd, the U.S. Department of Transportation issued an enforcement notice, and I'll just read the one sentence that stood out to me. Uh, quote, the obligation of airlines to provide refunds, including the ticket price and any optional fee charged for services a passenger is unable to use, does not cease when the flight disruptions are outside of the carrier's control. We've seen, seen similar decisions in the European Union and the UK. What does it say to you that Canada's consumer protections are so out of step with what these other countries are doing? And uh, after this situation is over, is improving these consumer protections for air travelers a priority of your government? Uh, there's no question that uh, this pandemic uh, was something that was never anticipated when we were looking at, um, at putting in place the passenger protection rights, and it is something that we will be looking at. Uh, it was a totally unexpected situation so that we can know in the future how to deal with this in a clear manner. I would say to you that it's often brought up that Europe and the United States have taken a different approach. I would ask you to look more closely uh, at uh, individual countries and airlines. I think you'll find that the reality is not quite the way that you presented it. It's a complex situation, and European and American airlines are suffering as much as Canadian airlines. Well, I imagine for the, uh, for the consumers that are out thousands of dollars, the, the situation to them is, is quite stark and quite simple. So I, I, would, I would offer that. Um, my, my next question concerns Rule 40 of the CTA's Code of Conduct, which states that members shall not publicly express an opinion about any past, current, or potential cases or any other issues related to the work of the agency. Um, assuming that the statement on vouchers from March 25th came from the members of the CTA, do you have any concern that the Rule 40 was breached? Um, I believe that uh, the CTA made a further statement of clarification after that. I don't have that. Uh, perhaps um, I can turn to my deputy minister uh, on that. But uh, if, uh, if, I, if we don't have that with us, uh, I know that the CTA did provide additional clarification after its initial remarks about the okay. suitability of vouchers, in the interest, although it was non-binding. In the interest of time, Minister, perhaps I can move on to my next question. Uh, this involves temperature checks on onboard airplanes, and your department recently announced that temperature checks would be required for all passengers boarding airplanes. I, I've had those checks myself on my way here to Ottawa to attend this meeting in person. Um, the I, IATA recently presented a proposal in which they call for an end to physical distancing on airplanes. Their argument is that these temperature checks are sufficient. Um, that is something that has been contradicted by Dr. Teresa Tam, who says that they're not effective at all at identifying who is infected. Um, can you commit to maintaining the social distancing requirements on airplanes? Uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Tam that the most important, the most important measure is physical distancing. And uh, Canada, 
with all of the uh, regulations and interim orders that's in place is going to make sure that we continue. That number one thing, it is the most important thing. Measuring temperature, doing screening, uh, asking uh -oh. additional layers to safety. Uh, temperature measurements uh, are important. They don't catch everybody because there are asymptomatic people. And there may be the odd person who has a fee occasionally that will be rejected, but then they've just got a simple cold. But they are an additional measure that will catch some people and add to the safety. And in fact, IATA recommends that. Uh, Min Minister, a, uh, different airlines are using different temperatures as their thresholds. Has your department come to a temperature uh, benchmark yeah. to adopt across uh, all Canadian uh, flights? Uh, we are working with, uh, it is CATSA that uh, is going to uh, be purchasing the uh, scanners, temperature scanners and, and temperature guns, and uh, we will be working with them. Those, those instruments actually specify the, the threshold, and uh, the same is, uh, applies to uh, the other equipment that is purchased by the airlines themselves. There is a recommended threshold above which uh, a, uh, a reading uh, or an interpretation of having a fever uh, is, uh, is applied. So thank you, Minister, and thank you, Mr. Backrack.